today i will talk about hiv diagnosis the first is diagnosis in neonates neonates are diagnosed by a dried blood spot for nucleic acid after 6 weeks or later or it can they can be diagnosed by p24 antigen or uh, western blot uh, assay after 18 months okay now the diagnosis in adults adults can be diagnosed by antibodies or viral products antibodies uh, are diagnosed by either rapid test live test or western blot test and viral products can be detected by p24 antigen and rna load uh, as you can see p24 antigen can be detected at the level of 15 picogram per ml and it is positive in 50% of people hiv rna which is which is a, which is a very good sensitivity and specificity if done by either i uh, four method uh, the highest sensitivity has the pcr which detects at 40 copies per ml the others are bdna tma and na nasba now uh, some little bit information about the all the tests the first one is hiv 1 or 2 antigen antibody immunoassay it is the fourth generation uh, uh, fourth generation assay and a p24 antigen is used this is the first test uh, used in the cdc guidelines which i will discuss later the other is hiv 1 to antibody uh, differentiation assay as you can see it will differentiate uh, it is either hiv 1 or hiv 2 or and it is also confirmatory test then the other one is hiv rapid antibody test it is used for the screening test it can give results in 10 to 20 minutes only and the other is hiv viral load hiv viral load can be uh, can be false positive in certain conditions which i will talk later whenever the test shows the low level of viremia especially when less less than 1000 then the others will be used are uh, absolute cd4 count so whenever it is less than 200 we suspect it is as uh, hiv aids or cd4 uh, percentage when it is uh, whenever it is less than 14% and uh, cd4 percentage is more reliable than uh, absolute cd4 count okay now the when when the hiv rna is false positive it is false positive with uh, influence of vaccine or auto antibodies or allo antibodies from pregnancy okay uh, and uh, auto auto antibodies like the conditions like sle and connective tissue disorders and these all the antibodies can be detected by a six weeks in 99% of the people and the median time to be positive is 2 weeks so by the way so we do, do this antibody test by 6 weeks so almost all the people will be positive if they are infected now the cd4 has uh, some fallacies like uh, it has the diurnal variation depression with intercurrent illness or vaccination and lab variation so so the trend is important not the absolute single value of cd4 count okay now the cd4 count is done till the virological suppression is achieved uh, after uh, achieving the virological suppression and cd4 more than 350 the regular monitoring is not necessary now we will uh, consider some uh, uh, when when the test becomes positive the for the this are the cbic staging of the hiv the first phase is eclipse phase as you can see not a single test is uh, positive here it is of 10 days around 10 days so so we can never diagnose hiv in eclipse phase by any method okay now the second is the window period what is window period it is the entry of a virus to the antibody detection as you can see the antibodies are detected from here stage 3 so uh, around 24 around 22 days so the antibodies will be positive around 22 days and we can detect uh, hiv in window period by uh, these two tests hiv rna and p24 antigen you can see the hiv rna becomes positive around the 10th day and p24 antigen becomes positive around 15 days and the antibodies will start appearing around 22 days around 22 days and it will become uh, positive in 99% almost all people by the end of the 6 week okay so for the window period the best test is hiv rna followed by p24 antigen now coming to the testing strategies first i will talk about the naco strategies and the later is the later is cdc guidelines the uh, naco strategies recommend for testing for hiv antibodies so this all hiv antibodies uh, are tested according to the naco though so the first one is the strategy 1 
strategy one is you for mostly screening test in the uh, for the transfusion so whenever the per person goes to the donate his blood the uh, blood so people from the blood bank check to him for hiv so only one test is required okay though so whenever it is the positive we will consider him as a positive and if it is negative uh, we will consider him as a negative so the patient, uh, person went to the blood bank for donating blood if the uh, first test is a positive uh, they will not uh, accept his blood so only one test is required for strategy 1 okay and the other is the strategy 2a if strategy 2a is required for the surveillance the uh, so uh, and it is a unlabeled study uh, it means what uh, when uh, whenever the uh, uh, epidemiologists or uh, any people who are considering the to see the uh, prevalence for hiv in certain community they will uh, take samples uh, from uh, random people and the samples will be unlabeled they will not uh, label the uh, sample as uh, this uh, this is the sample of this person this is the sample of this person they will take random samples and they will test it for hiv if it is the uh, negative we will consider it as a negative if it is positive uh, the random sample is uh, something uh, some person is positive uh, then then they will consider this as a uh, for the second test if the second test is positive they will consider this as a positive test if the first test was positive and the second is negative we will consider this as a negative so it is for the surveillance in the community not for the as a diagnosis uh, of a specific person okay this was the strategy 2a now coming to the strategy 2b it is done for the symptomatic patients uh, where whenever and, and and the first test in the all the start in the all strategies the first test is the test with the maximum sensitivity okay the first test is maximum sensitivity is required okay so uh, uh, the now coming to the strategy 2b it is done for the symptomatic patient so whenever we are suspecting uh, uh, hiv aids in a person we will go for the strategy 2b if the first test is negative we will consider him as a negative if it is the positive we will uh, go for the second test if the second test is positive we will uh, say this person as a uh, hiv positive and the uh, post test counseling and the treatment uh, which will be followed so also two tests are required to call him as a positive if the uh, first test is positive and the second test is negative then and then we will go for the third test if the third test is positive we will call him indeterminate and uh, if the third test is negative we will call him negative uh, uh, negative what we will do for the indeterminate so we will uh, retest them after 2 to 4 weeks later okay now coming to the strategy 3 of naco guidelines it is done for the asymptomatic people and in this strategy uh, three tests are required to say the person is positive so when the if the first test is first test is negative we will say him as a negative if the first test is positive we will go for the second test if the second uh, whatever the result of second test we will still go for the third test this is uh, something different from the strategy strategy 2b uh, in strategy 2b only after uh, uh, if the second test is positive we don't go further and label him as a hiv positive in strategy 3 uh, if the even if the patient is a positive we will still go for the third uh, test and all the three tests are positive then we will call him as as a hiv positive positive okay if the third test is indeterminate uh, we will call him a uh, negative we will call, we will call him indeterminate if the second test is negative uh, second test is negative we will go for the third test this is something similar to the strategy 2b if it is positive we will call him indeterminate just like here and if it is uh, positive we will classify uh, we will see as if if the if we see if at the high risk or if he is at the low risk if he is the he is at the low risk we will consider him as a negative even if he is at the high risk uh, uh, person we will consider him indeterminate so what we will do for the indeterminate we will retest them two to four weeks uh, for the antibodies so it is a little bit time time consuming so we will wait for two to four weeks but uh, but we, if the person is uh, uh, wanting uh, i want to know right now if i am positive or not we, we can go for hiv rna positive hiv rna at the any time okay but these are for these are the naco guidelines so so strategy 1 only one test is required for the trans transfusion and screening 
the strategy 2a it is required for surveillance in community and two tests are positive uh, to say the person is positive and these are unlabeled studies now strategy 2b it is done for the symptomatic patients and two tests are required to be called the person as a positive and strategy 3 it is done in the asymptomatic people and the, we will call him as a positive whenever all the three tests are positive okay this was the naco guidelines now uh, these are the two guidelines given in the harrison uh, the, uh, the first is the screening of hiv 12 uh, by eia if it is positive we will repeat the test if it is the the repeat test is also positive we will go for the western blot test and if the western blot test is positive we will consider them as hiv uh, confirmed hiv 1 uh, confirmed patients if the uh, western blot is negative we will go for hiv 2 eia if it is po uh, positive we will go for hiv western blot if it is positive we will consider them hiv 2 uh, positive if the eia of negative or uh, western blot is negative or any hr or the second test uh, was negative we retest them uh, in 3 to 6 months if it, uh, we are suspecting him as a clinically or if the hiv 2 uh, is uh, indeterminate or hiv 1 is indeterminate by a western blot we retest them by 4 to 6 weeks so stable indeterminate uh, a western blot by 4 to 6 weeks so late uh, weeks later uh, makes hiv infection unlikely but still it should be repeated twice at 3 months interval to rule out hiv infection so now coming to the cdc guidelines according to the cdc guidelines the first test is done is fourth generation hiv 12 antigen antibody combination immunoassay so the uh, if it is the negative we will label them as a negative the antigen here used is p24 antigen if this is positive we will uh, go for the hiv 12 differentiation immunoassay if the uh, differentiation immunoassay if uh, for hiv 1 is positive we will look at them 1 2 is positive we will send them 2 if it is negative or indeterminate we will go for a nucleic acid uh, hiv rna test so if the hiv rna test is positive it uh, it means what the patient is negative for antigen negative for antibody uh, or and uh, it again negative for antigen negative for antibody but rna is positive it means what the patient has acute hiv1 infection okay if the hiv1 infection uh, hiv1 rna is negative we will label him as a negative so the first uh, appear will be rna by the 10th day then uh, uh, around p24 antigen becomes positive around the 16 day as we can see here around 15 16 days and antibodies will start appearing around 22 days uh, and it will be positive uh, almost in all people by the 6th week so whenever the antigen is negative antibody is negative but the uh, uh, rna is positive it means patient has acute hiv infection and if antigen antibody is positive we can suspect they may be they are uh, the people of or chronic hiv infection okay this was the cdc guidelines okay thank you